Shirley. Get your butt back home right now. I'm not done giving you a lesson yet. Hold on a second. What are you even going on about? What lesson do you think you're teaching me here? You really believe violence is the answer to everything? I'm in the hospital right now because of your abusive behavior. Are you proud of yourself? Hey, listen up. That's what happens when you can't even make your own husband happy. You deserve every bit of the misery you're experiencing. What were you thinking? Treating me like an animal and pushing me down the stairs? And to make matters worse, you kept kicking me while I was down and unable to get up. Have you lost your humanity completely? You treated me like I was a disposable, as if my well-being meant nothing. Just a little reminder, I am your wife. Oh, there you go again with your excuses. I already told you, you couldn't even satisfy me, and now you're paying the price for it. Consider it a lesson learned. What exactly did I do that wasn't satisfying enough for you? I cleaned the entire house, prepared your meals exactly as you requested, took care of the laundry according to your preferences, and even made sure the bed was perfectly arranged to your comfort. What more could you possibly expect from me? Hmm. Yeah, now that I ponder on it, you're right. You always follow my instructions like a mindless robot, and it's gotten boring. Every single day, you're stuck in the same monotonous routine. Aren't you sick and tired of it? Or is being a boring, predictable drone your true calling in life? What's your point? How on earth can I make things more exciting for you? It's like I can't do anything right these days. I'm feeling pretty lost here. Any suggestions on how I can turn things around? Okay, well, let's not dance around the truth here. The problem is your face. It's just so dull. It lacks any sort of excitement. Just the sight of you makes me furious. If only you were as attractive as the day I stupidly married you, maybe I wouldn't have to resort to beating you up like this. Hold on a second, let me get this straight. You're seriously trying to justify your tantrum and physical assault by claiming my face isn't as pretty as it once was? Owen, there is something seriously messed up in your head. That and my work didn't go well. But don't you dare blame me for anything. I work hard all the time, so I deserve to blow off some steam and relax. And what better way to release my frustration than by shouting and pummeling my idiotic wife, huh? You know I always get a thrill out of it, don't you? You know what, Owen? You're completely sick. I've had enough of your twisted games. I'm done playing along. I'm going to call the police and let the law handle you. What? Now you're talking about the police? Are you freaking kidding me? Have you completely lost your mind? No, Owen. It's only the right cause of action. Your abuse has gone on for too long, and it's about time I put an end to it. In fact... Once this whole mess is sorted out, I'm going to demand a divorce. Ha! <laughs> divorce, huh? Well, isn't that just music to my ears? You finally hit the nail on the head, Shirley. Divorce is exactly what I've been longing for all this time. Bravo. You finally caught up to speed. Why am I not surprised? Huh? <laughs> You're not surprised? What do you mean? I thought you'd be groveling on your knees, begging me for forgiveness. Guess I overestimated your capacity for self-reflection. You think too highly of yourself, Owen. It's no secret you're itching to divorce me so you can run off with your mistress. Everyone knows it. So there's no use in trying to hide it anymore. What? How do you know that? I know everything, Owen. Do you think I'm a fool or what? Do you think I'm some kind of fool? Every single day, you come home late with that cheap perfume of hers clinging to your clothes and lipstick stains on your neck. Do you honestly believe I'm too oblivious to notice all that? Oh, wow. What are you now? A detective or something? So what if I'm having an affair? You should actually feel proud that your husband is apparently so incredibly attractive that women would go to extremes just to be with me. It's a clear testament to my charm and desirability, right? Yeah, whatever. I've realized that there's absolutely nothing left between us. Where there used to be love is now being replaced by pure hatred. 
Look at you with those big words coming out of your filthy mouth. Do you really believe you can survive without me? Deep down, you wouldn't dare to go through with a divorce. I know you too well. Do as you please. Divorce is inevitable, and you better be prepared to face the consequences. Don't think you can escape the reach of the Lord this time. You really thought you could escape my clutches, huh? Thanks to you, I've got a nice little record now. But here's a reality check. Don't even dream of handing over our daughter to some plain old housewife like you. That's just too hilarious. <laughs> Don't underestimate me, sweetheart. Just so you know, I've already begun the process of filing for divorce. There's nothing left for us to discuss. Oh, and by the way, I've landed a job and I'm more than capable of affording Christine's college expenses on my own. So you can save your worries about that. I've got things under control and I'm moving forward without you. Don't go assuming everything's going to be a walk in the park. Have you even considered the massive gap between my lifetime earnings and yours? It's not just going to magically disappear. What is that you're trying to say? Do me a huge favor and just get out of our lives already. We've had enough of your nonsense. And we're better off without you. You had the privilege of living with me, did you? You got a taste of the extravagant lifestyle that a big shot like me can afford? Let me tell you something. Neither you nor your pathetic existence will be able to handle the simplicity that you might scrape together. You're clueless about what real success looks like. So go ahead, enjoy your mundane life while I continue to thrive. You mean the lifestyle where you barely gave us any money to live on while you caroused around town with your squeeze? There was absolutely nothing luxurious about the life that we live with you. We had to deal with your abuse every day when you got home. Throwing food? Throwing Christine's textbooks? Outside the house, you pretended to be a model husband who spent quality time with his family. But inside the house, you treated us like garbage. I mean, you are garbage. <laughs> One useless, good-for-nothing woman and the garbage that she begat. You couldn't even give me a son. Just another woman, destined to be as useless as her mother. <laughs> and instead of tossing you out like the garbage you are, I kept you around. And now you're trying to run away from me? If I had known this garbage was going to run off, I would have never bothered to pick it up in the first place. Everything would have been fine if you just listened to me. But you had to go and backtalk. What do you expect from me? I have absolutely no use for a husband who cheats, contributes nothing financially, and only adds to the chaos in our lives. And can you please spare me the whole alpha male chauvinistic language? It's beyond tiresome. So if you're done with your self-centered attitude, maybe we can have a real conversation. But until then... Don't hold your breath. Get this through your head. Women are only worth something until their mid-twenties. And you, my dear dried-up old tart, have zero value to anyone. That's precisely why I upgraded to a fresh young thing who's the complete opposite of you. She's vibrant, exciting, and doesn't carry the burden of your irrelevance. So enjoy wallowing in your bitterness while I revel in the company of someone who actually brings value to my life. Don't bother trying to compete, because you've already lost. Great! Then go live with her. I have nothing else to say to that. And unlike you, she's got a brain in her pretty little head. She doesn't make me angry. Anyway, we'll be plenty happy never hearing from you anymore. But don't think this means that I'm going to forgive you for running off on me. I... I've got it. If you ever want to see a penny of child support, you better come over here and beg me for it. Right on the doorstep in front of everyone. No need, really. I don't need a single penny from you. Just do us a favor and leave us alone for good. Goodbye. All done. I'm on my way home now. Okay, I'll get dinner started. Thanks, Han. I appreciate how much you've been helping me out recently, even after you started working. What's this all of a sudden? <laughs> of course I'm helping out. You're always working so hard, too. It's the least I can do. But you're in college now, and, um... What? 
I've been wondering if you might have a boyfriend or something. Is that what you've been worrying about? I'm not dating anyone right now, so rest easy. <laughs> and even if I did, I would only date someone who understood that my mother takes priority. I'll always be on your side. I promise that will never change. Oh, Christine, that does it. I'm picking up some ice cream on my way home. Yes. All right then, drive safe. Uh, hold on a second. Oh my God. Hmm? What's wrong? What should I do? Mom, hold on. Whatever you do, don't come home yet. He's in front of the house. Huh? By he, do you mean? Yeah, it's dad. He's slamming on the front door right now. He's doing what? Christine, are you okay? He's not in the house, right? The door is locked, so I'm okay for now. The curtains are closed too, so he can't see me. I don't think he can force his way in or anything, but I think it's best that you don't come home right now. I'll let you know as soon as he leaves. Just find somewhere to go until then. No way. There's no way I'm just gonna leave you there with him. There's no telling what a man will do when he loses his temper. If he sees you, he's just going to get madder. You understand that, don't you? Right now, he's standing in front of the house yelling for you to come out. There's no way you should come home right now. Got it? Please, I'm calling the police. If I call them before anything happens, he can't get too out of hand. I don't think it's going to make any difference. Do you remember what the police said when we called them before? They said it was just a simple lover spat. It pisses me off even now, just thinking about it. The cop was just an old man with outdated thinking like your father. Of course, it still makes me angry when I think about it too. But things must have changed since back then. At the very least, calling the cops isn't going to hurt anyone. I'd much rather call them than risking anything happening to you. Okay, I got it. Um, hold on a second. Someone is talking to him now. What's happening? Who is it? What's going on? Um, I guess some guy from the neighborhood is talking to him right now. It sounds like his name is Johnny or something? The Johnny guy is warning him to cut it out from what I can hear. Really? Johnny? I wonder if he'll be okay. Your dad is in one of his moods, isn't he? It's gonna be bad if anything happens. Please call the police right away. But it seems like everything's okay. He even apologized to the Johnny guy. What? That sounds impossible. Well, all the neighbors and his co-workers always took him for a nice guy. Maybe he doesn't even want to look bad even in front of our new neighbors? That's true. I guess he wouldn't want to keep shouting if he was going to draw attention to him. Maybe Johnny is an acquaintance of his. Whoa, he's down on his knees now. Who the heck is this Johnny guy? Do you think I should go out there? No, stay inside. It's still dangerous. Just hold on. I'll be there in just a minute. I'll see what's going on. I had no idea that you were acquainted with Mr. Cooper. He's the old president of my company. I guess it really is a small world. What's the deal? Coming to the house and messaging me out of the blue? What do you think you're doing, Owen? You and I have quite a history, you know. Look, I've thought about things very carefully and I've come to a conclusion. What kind of conclusion are you talking about? I thought we agreed that you would stay away from us and that we would be history. We have no connection anymore. Don't say that. <laughs> I have good intentions, you know. I came over to try and fix things and re-establish our family ties. It's great, isn't it? You, Christine, and I live together again under the same roof, like a real family. Did you hit your head or something? You think we want to re-establish ties with you? You? You treated us like garbage and cheated on me. Not in this life or the next. Well, about that. Do you think we could just let bygones be bygones? I was young. I'm a totally different person now. I know I really made life difficult for you guys. Do you know how long I've spent looking at your nice guy, Frassard? Let me guess. You're apologizing right now because your old president happened to walk by and see you last night. You never came over to apologize or anything. The best thing for me and Christine is if neither of us ever have to do anything with you again. I get it. I don't want to cause any more trouble for you guys. But I was hoping... Do you think you could tell Mr. Cooper that you've forgiven me? If he hears it from you, I think he would definitely believe it. I don't have any way to get in contact with him myself. You made your bed, and now you need to lie in it. Trying to barge into my house after however many years? Screaming my name and bothering all of the neighbors? 
Johnny heard you screaming and rushed over to help us out. On top of that, you're a total stranger to me as far as I'm concerned. You should just be glad that the police don't get involved. Yeah, but there's a real chance that I might get fired the way things stand now. After all the work that I've done to get into this company and climb the ladder. You understand, right? I can't let all of that work go to waste. Nothing to do with me. Don't come to me looking for help. This is completely your fault. And for that matter, I heard that you told the people at your company that the reason we got divorced is because I cheated. When actually, you were the one cheating and making life hell for us. Well, you see, I had to maintain a certain image at work, you know. Remember, my job was the sole provider for our family before we ended up getting divorced. It's what kept us all fed for all those years. So tell me, why are you suddenly showing up now, of all times? I'm guessing that woman you ran off with finally had enough of your nonsense and left you high and dry? And now you think you can just waltz back into our lives, forcing yourself upon us. If she was truly smarter than me, she would have made the wise choice of escaping before making a colossal mistake of marrying you. So take your sorry self somewhere else and let us live in peace. Of course not. Honestly, the truth is that I felt a lot of pity for you and Christine, so I came over to see if there was anything I could do to help you guys out. Is that right? Nah, we're good. We don't need pity or anything else from a guy like you. So no, I don't think I'll be lying to Johnny for you. Besides, I told him the real reason that we got divorced ages ago. It's a little late for you to start apologizing now. What? We were together for over 15 years. Don't you think you could do even just a small favor for your ex-husband? I'm just asking for a little support. I can never forget what you did to us, not even for a second. And I can't forgive you. I had no idea Johnny was your old president. He volunteers to help single parent families like ours now, you know. He's even renting his house to us at a special discounted rent. Anyway, there's no way I could lie to him after all he's done for me. Come on, can't you show a bit of sympathy here? My entire life is at stake. We used to be married for crying out loud. Would it kill you to cut me some slack? Your life has got nothing to do with me. And besides, me and Christine's lives are on the line as well. I have to prioritize that over you. If I give in here, it'll be like just before when you have me jumping at your every whim. Jumping at my every whim? You know, the most important job for a woman is respecting the opinion of men. Oh God, are you still on about that? Do you think you could say something like that in front of your co-workers? Or in front of Johnny? There's no way! All the stuff going through your head is stuff you would never actually say in front of people. Don't you realize how dumb that is? There are some things that go without saying. And women like you, the only reason you exist at all is for men like me. So get your act together right this instant and do what I say, woman. Actually, I seem to be getting along just great without you. You're nothing to me anymore, so don't contact me again. Goodbye forever. Wait a minute, hold on. So you're seriously going to treat me like that after I've come here asking for your help? Jeez, you really don't get it, do you? You honestly think your life would be all rainbows and unicorns without me. Man, you've got some serious delusions going on. Are you still talking? Do you really think you're in a position of power here? We don't need you at all. You might have treated us like trash, but the biggest trash in our lives the whole time was you. That's why we threw you away. So why don't you get your act together and acknowledge that it's you who is nothing but trash. After that incident, my husband Owen was demoted and transferred to a remote location far away from us. Johnny, who used to be a superior, had the power to get him fired, but he was concerned about the potential repercussions. So instead, Johnny arranged for Owen's transfer to serve as a way to keep him away from us. As part of the transfer, Owen was also demoted from a managerial position to a regular staff role. It's hard to predict how someone as arrogant as him will handle such a situation. However, I doubt he would risk quitting and jeopardizing his position at a prestigious company. 
he'll likely put on a fake smile and bear with it. Interestingly, Johnny himself grew up in a single parent household. After retiring, he wanted to support other single mothers, which is why he offered me a discounted rent for the house. I am truly grateful to have someone like him in my neighborhood, especially considering the potential danger my ex-husband posed to me and Christine. Although we could have involved the police if needed, they often act after something had really happened. Plus, if they were even to arrest Owen, it's unlikely he'd face serious consequences right away. My greatest fear was losing everything. So the current situation seems like the best way forward. On another note, it turns out that Owen's girlfriend did leave him and got married to a wealthy young man. It seems my intuition was correct, and that's likely why Owen showed up at the house. I can't blame any woman for eventually running away from him. Since he couldn't find anyone else willing to tolerate his behavior, he resorted to coming to me, thinking I would take him back. It infuriates me to think he believed that I would reconcile with him. But thankfully, things are finally over now. As long as Owen remains employed at his current company, he won't bother us again. From this point onwards, Christine and I can focus on rebuilding our lives. Despite how awful my ex-husband is, I'm grateful for him for one thing. He gave me Christine, who is the most precious thing to me in the world.